we're going to talk about the newly launched GBT v4 and how we can use it to uh, learn or improve our ggplot and our data viz. So uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you some introductory examples. If you are new to data viz, I highly recommend this. GBT v4 is an awesome tool to get you started. If you're more advanced, you can skip ahead. I'm going to throw in some timestamps. And uh, I, uh, I'm going to throw in some timestamps, and we're going to do some more advanced stuff, how to tune your charts, how to use more advanced things, what ChatGPT can do as like sort of a partner in your data viz journey. And then we're going to end with some advanced stuff, stuff that I'm still trying out, stuff that may or may not work. And we're going to push the limits of uh, GPT v4 uh, together, and uh, we're, we're going to experiment a bit. So to get started, first, go to chat.openai.com to use GPT v4. Um, you're going to need to subscribe. It's $20 a month. Uh, and then you're going to make sure that you're selecting GPT v4 down here in, uh, in your chats. On the left here, I have a notebooking tool. This is called Hex. Highly recommended, especially in R. I think it's the best way to, to use R. There is a free tier available. Um, uh, and you can use it at work. Uh, I use it at work and for um, hobby projects. And uh, it's a lot like Jupyter Notebooks, if you've seen those. So I think it's great. Uh, but if you don't have that, if you don't want to use that, this Everything that I'm going to show you is going to work in base R or in um, R Studio. So let's get started. If you're new to data viz in R ggplot, what would you want to start with? Well, why don't we ask ChatGPT? Hey, I'd like to learn how to use R to uh, R and ggplot to make uh, data viz. Can you help me get started? see what it says. So it looks like uh, it's interesting because I've been playing around with the exact same stuff in GPT 3.5 and uh, we can already see some differences. So here it's telling us how to get started by using R, which is a great little change. Of course, I already have that installed, so we don't need that. Okay, now it's telling us how to install packages. Uh, Hex is great because it comes preloaded with just a bucket load of uh, packages and you can see I've already taken the time to add some of the rare ones that we're going to get into today. Uh, but you do need to load it. You always need to load it into your kernel. So I've done all the loading in there and now we're going to get into the code. Here we go. So it's going to give us some sample data. It's interesting that it's kind of slow on sequences like that. LLMs are funny things. Okay, sample data. Let's copy this code snippet, put it right in over here. Again, I'm going to go a little bit slow if you're new. And so what we've got is we've got data here. That's a data frame. And we can just inspect that. What is that data showing us? Well, right here. A, B, C, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 9, 8, 7. That's cool. OK, I'm going to delete that. And then let's make a scatter plot out of that data by copying the code here and just pasting that right here. Boom. OK, if you're new to R and ggplot, you've already got a working plot. It looks pretty cool. That's great. OK. But this data is kind of boring, right? Let's use something else. Uh, I'm going to ask it to tell me about using the diamonds data set, which is a classic uh, standard library in R. That's great. Can you show me a basic scatter plot using the diamonds data set? Oh, it looks like it gave some cool little adjustments there if you wanted to go even further. All right. So it's going to tell us about the diamonds data set. It contains about 54,000 diamonds, including price, carat, cut, color, and clarity. And so we're going to make a scatter plot of the diamonds price against its carat weight. OK, let's wait for this to finish. And we're going to run that code. I love this. It's using uh, the themes already, so it's great. Here we go. We've already loaded, so I'm going to delete that part, but the rest is great. And there we go. We've got a um, scatter plot of carrot versus price. I find this hard to read, uh, and they've already done one cool thing, which is they've made the alpha 0, uh, 0.1. You can see if you get rid of that, this is very hard to read. OK. But that's good. 
but I, I still find it a little hard to read. So I'm going to do something a little bit more advanced, and we're going to cover more of this in the middle section of this video. But what happens if I say, that's great. Can we make those points into X shapes instead of circles? So if you're just like, I want to adjust this in a particular way, you can just tell ChatGPT that, and it's quite good at figuring it out. Now, I happen to know GM Point already includes uh, the ability to do this. Yep, the shape equals four. So I'm cheating a little bit, but you can just go kind of wild and, and see what it can do, and you'll find the limits yourself. Here we go. So all I need to do is copy this line and edit it, and I find it... I get a little bit better understanding of density here. See how these like lines here, uh, which shows um, uh, that the data is discontinuous, uh, show up a little bit better. So that's something that I like to go with. Okay, uh, let's move on to a different type of chart now. Looks like it's done. Awesome. Can you show me a bar chart? Let's see what it says. Okay, I'm gonna go ggplot. We're gonna use dplyr for uh, data manipulation. Looks like it's gonna stick with the diamonds data set. I happen to know that ggplot is really good at using diamonds data set and the MT cars data set, which is a uh, data set about cars. Um, there's one more, but I forget what it is right now. It's gonna uh, using dplyr to group by and summarize. And by the way, the R syntax here is just impeccable. Uh, it's better than my code a lot of the time. Again, I'm going to delete the library steps and run through here. Here we go. Here's the number of diamonds they have in the data set by cut. And you can see that it's increasing here. Some fair, more good, more very good, more premium, and the most ideal. Uh, and then it's going to tell you. So again, if you're super new to ggplot, uh, some of the syntax takes a little while to understand, and I'm not going to explain it to you because you can type this into G uh, ChatGPT and do it for yourself. All right, let's do uh, one more after it's done telling us about all this stuff. And uh, I'm going to go a little controversial here on my very first video. I might, you know, get get some people a little upset because I'm going to say, "Can you?" Give me the same data in a pie chart. Here we go. Pie charts are actually uh, kind of tricky to do in ggplot by design. Let's see. So it's starting out the same. It's going to group by, summarize. It might actually be the exact same, except for the polar coordinates and then maybe some coloring. I'm not sure. Here we go, plot, this is the basic plot call, GM bar, stat equals identity. It's taken out the fill command, because of course with the pie chart we're gonna need different colors. Uh, taking out the labels, because those look kind of bad in ggplot with the pie chart. And let's give it a try. There we go. Okay, and just so you're wondering, and I think this is fair, I'm going to end out the beginner section by asking this. Pie charts are a good way to visualize data. And this is where we have to wonder whether or not the safety engineers made sure that uh, GPT-4 is in alignment. Let's see, it can be visually appearing, but their effectiveness depends on the context and specific goals. Ah, all right. Well, if you're new to data viz, this is a uh, hotly debated topic. And this is actually a really good summary, actually. So a lot of people say uh, pie charts are difficult in uh, because humans are bad at understanding angles. So in other words, to understand proportion in this versus a bar chart, I would have to understand the angle here versus the angle here. Can I tell you, is this 12 times, 15 times? I have no idea. Humans are bad at that. Whereas we're quite good at comparing sizes. And there are 
proportions of size here, so you could say maybe they're not so bad, but that's sort of where the debate lies. Okay, let's move on to something uh, a little bit more advanced. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some more advanced charts, and then we're going to show you how ChatGPT can modify those charts. And uh, and that's really start uh, if you are already a uh, ggplot um, proficient or someone who uses it regularly, that's where the use cases start to be for you, I think. Can you show me the uh, more advanced chart using, let's see, we should probably do uh, using ggjoy. I'm not sure if that's actually right, but it might be. GG Ridges. Okay, well, I'm going to install GG Ridges then. I wonder if that's true. I'm not going to look it up right now. I'll put it in here so we don't. Okay, and now let's see what data are we going to use? Are we using diamonds? Okay, log transformation, and we're going to do this. And joy plots are a really cool type of visualizing different distributions. There's a lot of different ways to do that, obviously, but I think they're quite cool. Okay, so here we can see the price distribution by cut, and you can see that fair diamonds are, let's see, that's interesting. I would have thought that this is not how the distribution looked, but I guess it is. Log price. So now I'm going to modify this. So this is where the advanced part comes in. So first I'm going to say, uh, boy, you know, I forget how to change the uh, uh, aspect ratio of the cells in here. So I'm going to say, how do I change the aspect ratio of a cell in uh, Jupyter Notebook in R to the uh, landscape? I said Jupyter Notebook because I'm not totally sure that ChatGPT knows what hex is, and it's the same uh, same function for uh, hex. There we go. I don't think we need to load the package. Let's give this a try. Excellent. Okay, I think that already looks a little bit better. That's great. We can tell it to stop here, and we can say, that's great. Now, can you make the charts overlap a little bit with, trans with some transparency? This is a, kind of an artistic flourish, um, but I actually do think that it adds a little bit to our understanding of the charts. So we're using GG Ridges now. Oh, we already did that, of course. Great. Okay. Yep. We have the lens landscape aspect ratio. That's great. We have the log transformation. That's already done. And so now we're just doing. Okay, you can see it's doing a 50% alpha. And probably it only needs to change, what's that function, scale? I'm not sure. It changed the scale, but I think there was another parameter that it has to adjust. Let's see. Ooh, that's great. But, hmm, I'd like them to be a little bit more overlapping. Overlap, ah, it said more than before. So it set it to one, 
I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to set it to 1.2 and see what happens. I like 1.5. This to me starts to feel like real ridges. Okay, we've got some data here. This is interesting, but what if I really wanted to go all out? And you can question my artistic choices here. That's fine. But um, what if I wanted to make this look kind of hip? Uh, let's ask ChatGPT to do that. And I'm going to go really wild on this one just to show you sort of you want to be pushing the boundaries when you're working with ChatGPT. Don't just ask it the simple stuff. Ask it to push way past the simple stuff, and then you can take it back. And it might make some errors, by the way, and that's part of the process. Uh, so scale to 1.5 because I already know I like that. Change the background to black. Change the color scheme. So this is a Veritas color scheme. It's great. There's nothing wrong with that, but to something more 80s synthwave style. Um, make the font more unique. Anything else? Make this chart pop. Again, you want to uh, access the creative parts of your thinking um, when you are working with ChatGPT because you never know what it's going to come up with. So this is kind of crazy, and I don't know what it's going to do with it, uh, even as I'm making this video. I haven't used make it pop as a command before, but ChatGPT is based on language, right? And so it's based on what humans are doing when they use that language. And so essentially it's going to call to mind all the publicly available data if people say, I'm making this chart pop. Uh, and it often comes up with really smart things. Sometimes it comes up with ridiculous things. Let's give it a try. Oh, interesting. So I asked it to do a uh, more um, 80s style, synthwave style, and I think it's going with what's called magma. It's one of the it's either magma or plasma, uh, which is sort of an 80s synthwave style. I was thinking it's going to come up with a unique one. I'm going to make it come up with a unique one. Okay. I don't know if Comic Sans MS is. What did I ask for? Font more. Well, all right. I guess that's unique. <laughs> okay. Let's see what this looks like. I'm going to plot it, and then we're going to read what it's, uh, changes it made. You know, th is this Comic Sans MS? I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks good. I think the only problem, really, is that uh, the black background does not work, especially with this, with this, um, uh, uh, the black background does not work with this palette, obviously, since one of these is black. Okay, what should we have it do? I think instead of black, it should be dark. And then instead of... Um, I'm going to have it do a custom palette. And then I think these these have a black outline. I think we'll keep that with the dark gray. That looks great. Let's keep making some changes. Can we change to a dark gray background? Can we do a custom? Anything else? Wrong price. Yeah, let's let's also make this the price distribution and change the x-axis label to be more readable. Log scale is hard to read. I don't know what it's going to do with that. I mean, you can tell what like I don't even know what I'm reading here. Log of price six. I don't know what that means. It may not be able to be smart enough to understand that I really wanted to give the um, non-log transformed labels. So I probably should have just said that. Actually, I'm going to try that. Maybe that'll be where we close this section out. OK. 
think it's doing all the same steps. I should have told it it doesn't need to do all those, so we don't have to waste time. Custom palette, here we go. It's interesting, ChatGPT v3.5, or GPT v3.5, which was ChatGPT, uh, sometimes made kind of syntax errors with custom palettes. I haven't yet seen it make syntax errors like that in v4, but we're going to give it a try. Okay. Copying the code for the custom palette. I'm curious what this looks like. the background there we go there's the background dark gray okay it's gonna make all of those things dark gray and then I asked it to make the axis more interpretable I wonder how it's gonna do that Ooh. oh that's how it's doing custom labels on the X it's not doing that before right uh, scale X continuous that's a new that's new all right, let's give it a try. What do you think it's going to look like? <laughs> okay, I don't love this palette, obviously. This and this should not be the same. Um, but the rest is great. I'm going to take the uh, take the old palette back and go with replace that here. That's pretty good. Let's go with... Uh, I think this is magma, so let's go with plasma instead of magma. I think that's right. Mm. I'll tell you what this is if it works. Okay. So what we did here is, um, it's very smart to have done this, but it didn't quite figure out exactly what the begin and end commands are doing. So since we're in the more advanced section, I'll let you know that scale for Veritas has two com uh, two parameters. One is called begin and one is called end. And uh, the thing about Veritas that's sometimes hard to deal with is that it goes from very dark to very light. It was built that way by design so that you could have uh, inferences about it's sort of to max out your visual perception when you print, uh, print it to, um, dark, uh, to grayscale. But it has a problem because no matter what your background, uh, unless the uh, the chart is uh, perfectly dense, uh, you're going to have a clash against the background. So it's really smart in the sense that it did um, uh, up here, it did end equals 0 0.9 because it assumes that I'm going to have a white background. And so it's going to start it, it's going to, sorry, it's going to end the uh, c color palette only 90% of the way through. So that's really sharp. And like, this is a fairly advanced technique. The problem that it made is that I asked for a black background, and so it should have done the reverse. It should have done begin. And so you can see now, instead of being black, we have the dark dark blue here. So quite advanced, but you still need to watch it. Okay, this looks pretty cool, don't you think? Um, I think, and it did the uh, price change here. Uh, you know, we could keep tweaking this forever, but I think we're just gonna say that's enough. Uh, and the lessons to be learned here are uh, keep talking to ChatGPT, tell it what you want, let it be creative, um, but you still have to keep watch. Okay, now we're going to move into the final section of this video where I'm going to try some stuff that's more experimental. And I'm going to do things that I'm not sure if they're going to work. And in fact, I'm just going to do this live. I'm not going to edit this too much, maybe a little bit if there's something really boring or slow or, or dramatic failure. But mostly I'm just going to keep going. But, and the reason is I want you to see how, you, how to work with ChatGPT in failure cases and more experimental cases. So what are we going to do to start with? Let's start with some real data. Uh, and scraping is going to be the first thing. Okay. Now I'd love to use real data. Can you help me scrape the top film gross grosses from Wikipedia and then use those in the ggplot? Scraping is something that ChatGPT both 3.5 and 4 have trouble with. Um, and so this may or may not work. Let's give it a try. Arvest and dplyr, we already have those installed and loaded, so we are ready to go. But it's great that it's giving us these instructions in case you haven't. All right, so it's going to start with the URL. And I'm going to actually go ahead and just check to make sure this URL is even a functioning one. OK, 
point. There we go. Yep, okay. So it's got a table we need. So we're likely to get something out of this. Oops. Okay, we're going to scrape the data. Ah, okay. So it's already making a mistake here. Um, rank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at table data and see what's going wrong here. So what I like to do is if I can debug it real fast, I do it myself. OK. So we can see the data looks pretty good here. So there's something wrong with what it's doing. And I think it's in the basic part of film doesn't exist. Yeah, it should be title. Let's see if that works. Worldwide gross V doesn't exist. Okay. It's interesting that it gets this wrong. There we go. Okay, so we're all good. And I'm going to tell ChatGPT that we had to do that. And the reason for that is that we may need to recreate this sort of thing later on, and I wanted to know. Okay, and then while I'm telling it that, I'm going to grab the rest of this is prepare the data for the plot. Great. Oh no. So this had the same. Oh, well, see, this might be a good example of uh, why I wanted to tell it what's wrong so that I could recreate the rest of the code. Let's see if it does this for me. By the way, if you're new to scraping, scraping is not fun. Scraping is always a slog, as far as I know. Um, you have to use all of these crazy commands. It's not fun in R. It's it's still not fun in um, Python, but it's a little bit easier. But it's always just a slog. It's always like, oh, you got to catch for this and watch for that. You might have to use some regex. And so ChatGPT is not great at it. But even being kind of mediocre at it is saves me so much so much hassle so uh i highly recommend giving it a try for a lot of scraping tasks at least as a first pass okay here we go um let's see if it updated this code no oh, film still not found so it looks like it didn't update this because really what we want is uh title is title is title there Oh, no, it, it was fine. Ha, ha, ha. It was fine because it changed it here. And so, okay, this is fascinating. I told it, hey, this is what I did. I had to grab title. And it goes, hmm, yeah, but I'd rather do it this way, which is to take title, and it accepted the update, but it kept its original naming, which is a smart way to do it because it doesn't know that I've pulled the next thing already. And now this function, as it was originally coded, works. So that's quite clever. And now we plot. Here we go. Top 10 highest grossing films. Looks pretty good, right? It, uh, the formatting here does not work because of the size. So that's something that ChatGPT doesn't know, which is how uh, things are going to look exactly at the end. And so I'm going to adjust the sizing here to be a little wider. That works, although it looks small in this. So I'm going to undo that. Um, top 10 highest grossing films. That's great. OK, let's go a little bit more advanced. Uh, let's ask it to see if it can grab Rotten Tomatoes data.
it might fail at this. Again, what I'm trying to do here is push this to the limit until we get uh, to a place where I can say ChatGPT is not working for this. This is fascinating. Okay, so Rotten Tomatoes may have this data, but it doesn't think it does, and I don't know whether that's correct. So it's giving us an outline of what to do. I don't think this is gonna work, but I'm excited to see where it fails. All right, here we go. Dplyr, is there anything that I don't have installed yet? Nope, so far not. Okay, we have the packages. Let's create the list of Oscar nominated best picture films. Okay, ChatGPT V3. It's a funny mistake, but it couldn't it couldn't figure out that I was saying nominated versus uh, uh, Oscar winning, which like if you watch the Oscars on Sunday is obviously a big difference. But it's a fairly uh, dom it's an extremely domain specific concept, and so it looks like ChatGPT V4. It's a funny thing to notice, right? But it's a it's an important one. And so it uh, looks like ChatGPT v4 has enough parameters uh, to mess with that it gets that. Okay, let's see if this code works. This is way better than v3.5. Um, the fact that, that we're getting this far without any massive errors. Oh, shit, I included those. This is going to slow it down. Let's try again. No, it made the mistake. See, it thinks it's nominated but it's getting a list of Academy Award winning films. So it still has that error. Okay, that's fine. Let's see what we can pull from this anyway. All right, uh, and then we're going to need to, oh, the, this is new. Okay, we're gonna install those. I need an API key. Okay, so we're gonna fail here, but not through any fault of chat, uh, chat GPTs, except for the nominated one uh, winning thing. Uh, we're gonna fail here because they want you to get an API key for, uh, for what function is this? OMB API, that's cool. All right, we're gonna stop here because uh, I think you get the idea of how to use, scrape data. Um, and uh, if I wanted to spend the time to get an API key, it looks like this might actually work. Okay, uh, what's another advanced function that we can use? Well, we can use an advanced function within modeling. Um, and so what's a good example of this? Let's, uh, hmm, let's do a, uh, create a sample of data and we're, I'm gonna show you uh, how we can use um, uh, ChatGPT to come up with some simulations and models for that. Okay, I'd love to show off text bin visualization with simulated data and data that has five categories. Can you show me how to simulate some data like that and then plot it? So there's a few reasons I want to do this. First of all, Hexpin is really cool data viz. Uh, and then second, Hexpin is going to give us a data set that we can then apply some statistical modeling on top of that I hope we can show some visualizations of. And again, what I'm going to do here is I'm trying to push the boundaries of chat uh, GPT and GPT v4. And so I'm aiming for failure and I just don't know when that's going to arrive. Okay, I love that it sets the seed. This code is so clean. I always forget to set the seed and it's just such a nice thing to do because then everyone can have full reproducibility of your data sets. Ironically, that's one problem with ChatGPT is there's no seeds as far as I know. So you can't actually make ChatGPT itself reproducible. Okay, simulated data, a thousand data points per category and looks like the category is just one through five, great. All right, let's create the, um, God, and it even says for reproducibility. That's so, so cool. All right, let's see if GM Hex works. GM Hex has sometimes had trouble in uh, GPT 3.5. Um, I haven't yet seen it fail on V4, but it may be a first time. Oh, that's pretty cool, but it's not very overlapping. What if, let's see, looks like, oh, all right. 
that's great. But instead, could instead of separating the categories, how is it separating them? By are we doing a facet? Yes, we're facets. So what it's doing is it's plotting all five here on what's called different facets. So if you're not super familiar with uh, ggplot, facets are just ways to plot a bunch of graphs in one graph. And facets are like, well, what is the dimension by which we're splitting the graph? And so uh, it's a cautious, careful way to make sure that it's showing me something that's plausible because right now what I asked it to do, it very well might show something that kind of looks ridiculous. We're going to see. Is it doing the exact same? Looks like it's doing the same thing here. Mean, standard deviation, mean, 12. Yeah, it looks like these are, this is the sim same simulation. I, w I should have said, to speed things up, I should have said, can you recreate the data viz, not the whole thing. I hope by now it's clear that this is, I've been doing data for 15 years. This is the most powerful tool I have ever seen uh, by a wide margin <laughs> um, because it's the meta tool. It's the tool that interacts with all the tools that you've been using. I'm doing R and ggplot right now, but this is equally, if not better, at Python because Python's even harder to write, right, for data viz. Uh, it's great at every language. And I was using it earlier today at work to translate um, C++ code into R so it can not only plot here, it can plot in other languages and it can translate the languages for you. That's in the history of my work has never been like possible. And it's not just possible, it's easy and powerful. So let's put this in. That's kind of cool, although kind of weird. Why does it have, okay, this is not what I would love. So what is wrong here? It's giving, oh, different colors. So here's what, here's what happened. I said different colors. And the thing about ggplot is that color is a parameter. And it can be color or fill. And so a human might hear and go, oh, so you mean different fill colors. But someone thinking about the code might hear me thinking different colors. This is a plausible interpretation of what I said. Um, and so I don't, I don't think it's a GPT error. In fact, I think it's quite clever. And so I'm just going to tell it I meant different fill colors. Also, what was the other thing that I didn't like about this? Now I'm blanking on that. Um, oh yes, also, I don't need the library or simulation steps. Could you just recreate the chart step, please? Always good to be polite, something that might become sentient later. different fill colors. This is unbelievable. Like, this is how I would speak to uh, a another data scientist who was working on this. If I was like, hey, can you do different colors? They might give me this chart and I'd be like, ah, sorry, I meant fill. And then this is exactly what would happen. Unbelievable. There we go. Okay, we're getting some more advanced stuff here. Great. Okay, now let's try a little modeling. Awesome. Now, I'd like to do a little statistical modeling. If you think I'm being ridiculous, by the way, by like talking through my process, I don't think I am. Uh, and it's a little bit complicated and LLM's best practices are a bit unknown. But what's going on behind the scenes is LLM's, when they're originally trained, they come out sort of this void, this sort of empty soul. And uh, behind the scenes, what OpenAI does, at least this is what I've heard, is that they'll actually train it by saying things like, you are a helpful 
uh, AI agent who is good at code and very polite. Um, and so it seems wild, but it's a, mo a language modeler, right? And so you want to give it uh, a personality to inhibit and to pick up data from. And so by me saying, here's my thought process, I'd like to do a little statistical modeling. It's already, just like a person is when you say, I want to do a little statistical modeling, it's getting into a new frame of mind. In other words, it's pulling from uh, different corpuses, or corpi, corpori, I don't know, different bodies of text uh, that uh, include statistical modeling. And so this actually changes the responses that you get. Um, so yeah. But you don't have to think about it that hard. Just talk to it like you were talking to a person. So let's go modeling uh, and incorporate that. Data set. Specifically, I'd love to do uh, clustering on this data set. Find the centroids for each of the five categories and plot those centroids on this same chart. Can we do that? I don't know if it's going to do this. Again, I'm aiming for failure here, and I may actually not hit it. OK, so we're going to start with the packages. I wish it didn't do that. Oh, except this time it does need to do that, because I don't have cluster installed. Set the number of clusters, can range results, cluster centroids. Uh, if you haven't done data science on uh, clustering um, before, uh, centroid means just if there's a bunch of data here, where's the center? Do we have a problem here? Okay, category not found. Let's do a little bit of debugging, otherwise I'm gonna take it to chat GPT to debug. Fill equals category, name equals category. What is going on? Fill equals category. So simulated data, we wanna see if this has uh, a column category in it. It does. So what's wrong here? Object category not found. Fill and group equals category. I'm not sure. I don't know what this error is. It's not great at debugging ggplot, but sometimes it's work. Sometimes it works. Did I? Maybe I missed a step. So I did the library. I installed this is there, centroids, centroids, custom colors. I don't think I skipped a step. Hmm. Seems to have a theory about what went wrong, but I'm not sure I understand it. Let's give it a try. huge one. So I've seen this problem in ChatGPT v3.5 a lot, which is that it doesn't understand our specific needs for uh, specifying the number of colors in a palette. Uh, I think Python will like more elegantly fail or maybe even just silently fail on problems like this. Um, it's frankly a problem that I run into quite a bit when I'm doing code because you always have to do these interpolations of colors and they have to be like, oh, is it discrete or continuous? I don't quite know why ggplot uh, makes that so difficult, but um, there's probably a good reason. OK, let's copy. 
top of them. There we go. And we've got centroids here. And the color coding is a bit weird, but it's not bad. OK, so what's the lesson here? The lesson here is uh, that you can do a lot of advanced things with, GG, uh, with, with uh, ChatGPT for DataViz. And one of them is to include a lot of statistical modeling into your, um, into your plots. And so it's something that's quite difficult to do. Like, this would take me a long time to code, a lot longer than it took here. And this is something I'm quite familiar with doing. Um, so uh, using ChatGPT for advanced statistical properties in your data viz is something that's going to speed up your work even at a very advanced level. Uh, and I'm going to, if this video is popular, I'm going to do some more um, uh, investigations of what kind of statistics and what kind of modeling can you do in ChatGPT because it's arguably even more complex and capable of doing that than it is with uh, data viz. And you can get really far really fast. Uh, so I'm new to this whole video thing. I think what I'm supposed to say is hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you have more things you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. This has been super fun for me. I am just so excited for what ChatGPT can, can do. Uh, we got a whole brave new world ahead of us in data science and in data engineering, data analysts, data visualization, all the data. Uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you can join me on that journey. Thanks. Bye.